what we are facing is a trouble, I think, and here comes our politeness and our sense of being tolerant and that we want to show our goodwill, which is obviously a natural characteristic of ours, is that we don't want to focus on the particular, but we take the global into the, in, into the particular, which means that, and this is what I found in the EU documents rather problematic, is that there is a a shifting of the concept, so that there is a reference to diversity in the sense that something needs to be protected and promoted, but it's not specified what the thing that the EU wants to protect. The question of the session, how did diversity become an EU value? The, the point of the matter, I think, from what you were saying was that diversity isn't a value, it's a description. Mm -hmm. But do the distinction between that as a description and a project, or an ideological project on diversity is a very different story. Because there, it is an attempt to turn diversity into a value by discrediting everything that existed prior to that, i.e. the nation state, the values that were attached to that, community, the kinds of things that were important. I think this is the point that's finally the pennies dropped for me from the discussion today. It really goes back to the point that I think Frank made in one of the contributions that the whole project is very much geared towards discrediting the concept of the nation state. And that's really what's driving this. Human mankind since centuries identifies itself firmly, villages, counties and nation states. Mm -hmm. So you, you belong to an ethnic group, so multi-ethnicity has always existed, contrary to multiculturalism, which is a new word in a way. Mm -hmm. So you cohabitate in a country or in a county with other ethnic groups, and you dress the same way, you have the same language, um, you might get into fights, but you belong to, to a tribe, to an ethnic group, and this is your identity. And what happens nowadays, this forced introduction of mixture of ethics of different countries, languages, religions, in the name of a multiculturalism, which is just a mix that makes the head spin. You lose your identity and you lose your belonging to a nation state. It makes you fragile. I think diversity is not much more than a value. It seems to be the tool that's going to solve all our problems. It's going to solve the economy or your business if it fails. It's probably just not diverse enough or the university as a business, it's not diverse enough. How come diversity is now an economic tool? Or oh, you've seen as to, uh, the great salvation out of our recession. How, how does this connect to this kind of diversity as a value that we should inherit anyway? We don't have a strong enough cultural identity in Europe or in any Western country to appear attractive to immigrants coming into these countries. So I was wondering, in the same note that multiculturalism and education became very popular, is there any way that education could be used to create a stronger national identity, a stronger mm. sense of patriotism, and what would that look like? What do you, before you give away the microphone, do you think education could be used in that way? Yes. <laughs> I want to disagree a bit with, with the gentleman here a bit, because you say that multicultural societies have a structural disadvantage. And I, I would say it depends on what kind of diversity we are talking about. You mentioned Switzerland. I think Switzerland is a good example for good diversity because you have a certain amount of competition between the different ethnic and, and language groups. And also, Mr. Boris also mentioned that Croatia could be a good example nowadays. But there is also bad diversity, which is politically enforced diversity from above as a tool to destroy something else. And I think we need to introduce some distinction between these two kinds of diversities mm -hmm. to, to have a, yeah, yeah, to propel the discussion a bit further. If you look at the case of Qatar, there's no terrorism in Qatar. They have lots of money. And uh, I was wondering if we might be overlooking something that they might be outsourcing a certain problem that they have these very the pe people who are very strongly religious Muslims and they can reach out to lots of people and they might cause internal problems for these countries. So instead, they send these people to Europe, some of them, and they give them lots of funding to build up a network and then j just preach to those who get lost 
in these Western values and or the lack of values, in fact. So this we haven't touched so much yet, but are we victims of an outsourcing of a religious leaders program? Could education be a way that we can rebalance things again? Um, yes, it could be a way if we decide to make education into that kind of a political instrument. But I would strongly argue against that. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I would argue against that is because the value I hold most dearly is that of freedom. And if you make education into a political instrument, you reduce the scope for what is needed to create citizens who can think freely for themselves, make independent judgments. And that's risky. That's the risk that freedom has been built into it. Just like tolerance, you can't have tolerance without offence. That's why the, the diversity agenda goes very strong, strongly hand in hand with protection. Mm. And that's why it's, you can't have freedom if you're going to be protecting everybody all the time. Europe has a great tradition of oriental studies, which ended somewhere in the first half of the 20th or mid 20th century. Or somebody would say after Edward Said wrote his, his pamphlet, Orientalism. Now, today in the West, you basically do not have a higher institution of education. I'm talking about academic institution that is teaching Islam from its primary sources. Taking it all, not taking sides, not taking values, evaluations, uh, disagreements. No, I'm, I'm talking about methodology. I'm talking about scholarship. Today in the Western uh, Europe and also America, you will hardly find a study of Orientalist studies in which the theory of jihadism has been studied. What I found in the EU document, and this is very interesting, the most typical verb, so action, that goes together with diversity is to promote. Now then, mm -hmm. if something is naturally there in the community, if something is an accepted value, if something is a norm, then you don't need to promote it because it's there. Yeah. So this is a telling verb that the promotion sheds light onto the fact that it's not an accepted value, it's a promoted value. And the way the texts sell it as a value is that they put it into a package. In marketing, this is what you call a package. Because diversity typically comes up with such values or such European achievements as freedom and diversity or democracy and diversity, solidarity and diversity. So once it's connected to something that we celebrate, then you, never, you will never question the value.